Oh, Father dear, I oft times hear you speak of Erin's Isle. Her lofty scenes and valleys green, her mountains rude and wild. This is the mass grave at Abbey Strury Burial Grounds near Skibbereen, the final resting place for thousands who died during Ireland's Great Famine. Abandon it, the reason to meet her. They dug a huge hole, filled it, dug another, leaving each pit open until it filled with bodies. Bodies had been thrown in, many without a coffin, one over another. The uppermost hidden from the light of day by a bare three inches of earth. There's up to 10,000 famine victims buried in these pits. Skibbereen was very badly impacted by the horror of Ireland's great hunger, losing one in three of its people to starvation, disease and emigration. They set my roof on fire with their cursed English spleen. The medieval graveyard at Abbey Strury was expanded during this crisis and the infamous famine pits were dug to cater for the thousands dying in the Skibbereen area. fell on the snowy ground. She fainted in her anguish at the day. We have a public coffin, a public cart, and a man employed every day who is paid one shilling per head to convey the dead only to one graveyard called the Abbey. At grave, my boy, in dear old Skibbery. One of the things that happened here in the, in the chaos of the famine, uh, and more than one occasion, is people were buried alive. Uh, if you were cold on the side of the road, you were picked up in a death cart and brought over here to these pits. And one very famous survivor lived to tell the tale. His name was Tom Geeran. And the story is, Tom died, or they thought he died, in 1848, when he was just three years of age, a little boy. And he was brought over here to the pits and tumbled into the pits with the other dead bodies. And as they were straightening out the bodies and covering them with straw and trying to make more space, they were hitting them with a shovel. And they hit Tom on the legs with the shovel and he gave out a little cry and they realised he was alive. And they took him out and he lived until 1910. But his knees or his hips were damaged, probably his knees. And he was, in his own words, a cripple. So, Post-famine, Skibbereen wasn't much better than during the famine, so poor Tom had no way of earning his own living. So he did what many, many poor people did at the time. He'd go into the workhouse to survive the winter, a process called wintering. And then for the summer, he'd travel around all the towns and villages as a mendicant, as a beggar. But in today's terms, he had a unique selling proposition as the man who'd risen from the dead. And boy, did he use it. He was a wonderful character. And he was very, very well remembered around. I've met many people who remember him, including my own grandmother, um, who met him at Bantry Fair. One verse of one of his poems remains. It started with, I'm the poet, I'm the genius. I rose from the dead in the year 48, when a grave by the Abbey had near been my fate. Since then, for subsistence, I've done all my best, though one shoe points east and the other points west. While there are up to 10,000 people buried in the famine pits, we only know a few of their names. Many were found on the side of the road and tumbled into the pit from the death cart. Many more were brought here by their loved ones in the dead of night, in secret and shame, some lacking the strength to bury them. The man had to take his wife on his back to the abbey graveyard, where he left her stretched on a tombstone, not having sufficient strength to dig a grave for her. She was buried the next day by a poor labouring man who accidentally passed by. But while they might be nameless, they are certainly not forgotten. The first memorial 
to the famine victims buried here was erected in 1887. This beautiful wrought iron memorial, made by Eugene McCarthy of Island Street, still remains in the graveyard today. In 1995, members of the Skibbereen Famine Committee carried out extensive renovation works at the site and the famine grave is now marked by limestone memorials and plaques. And the grave is lovingly maintained by members of the Skibbereen Famine Committee to this day. The infamous famine pits now dominate this medieval graveyard. But the site has been in use since around the 13th century, so there are centuries of other burials here. Earlier burials are marked by simple, uninscribed stones. So the earliest inscribed monument is from 1705. Here are just a few more memorials from this beautiful graveyard. There are many more stunning examples of the work done in cast and wrought iron by the McCarthy Foundry in Skibbereen throughout this graveyard. <laughs>